Hello guys, this is Code in Code and this is lecture for Edmund Scarp algorithm for maximum flow. And this is part of graph theory course part 2 series. Now, uh, the problem that we we are discussing is maximum flow. And again, a maximum flow is a flow of the maximum possible value from source to the sink. For example, if this was the flow network graph where denominator represents the capacity and numerator represents your uh, flow through that edge then this would represent the maximum flow from source to the terminating point now the maximum flow is of value 10 and this is the maximum you can achieve uh, there are many other things that i've already explained in two lectures make sure to watch uh, lecture 8 and 9 lecture 8 max flow introduction and lecture 9 we have already studied for Fulkerson algorithm or for Fulkerson method so make sure you have watched lecture 8 and 9 before watching this the 10th lecture so this is the problem we have to find uh, we need to devise an algorithm which can enable us to find the maximum possible flow through source to the terminating point or from source to the sink for that we have already seen for uh, Ford Fulkerson method but the problem with Ford Fulkerson method is that it does not specify how to find the augmenting path while Edmund Cobb's algorithm is just an implementation of Ford Fulkerson algorithm and that uses BFS to find the augmenting path so it also specifies how to find the augmenting path while Ford Fulkerson algorithm does not now uh, the time complexity of Edmund Scarp al algorithm is VE square where V represents the vertex set and E represents the edge set now as you can clearly see the time complexity in the worst case is independent of max flow while for uh, for the Ford Ferguson method, the time complexity was dependent upon maximum flow. Now, uh, Edmund Cup algorithm is actually a two uh, I think two step process that I believe. First, initializing the uh, residual uh, residual capacity matrix, and so, uh, as you can see here this each cell of course represents this this cell represents s a so this will represent the capacity of the edge s a this edge similarly this cell would represent a b so it represents the capacity of edge this edge from a to b now this represents the residual capacity of the whole graph now uh, as you might remember from the previous lecture we have seen what is residu uh, the residual capacity residual graph reverse uh, residual capacity so I hope you have watched the previous lecture because there are many things that you must know now since from S to A the capacity or the residual capacity is 7 so from A to S the capacity would be 0 a to s you can see the capacity is zero because since there is no flow in the original uh, original edge i mean in the edge s to a there is no flow so from a to s the reverse edge the imaginary reverse edge the residual capacity would be zero because the re uh, reverse for the reverse edge the residual capacity is equal to the flow in the uh, original edge now after step 1, step 2 is the finding the augmenting path. Keep finding the augmenting path till we have one. So once we do not have any augmenting path, that is where we stop. And that represents your maximum flow. So basically you would initialize the max flow to 0. Each time you you'd keep finding the uh, next augmenting path and incrementing the max flow. And how it is done, let me explain you. So since we already know that admin cup uses BFS. So this is Q, this is the original graph, this is residual capacity uh, matrix and this represents parent of each uh, each node. So why do we need keep track of the parent is that uh, once you find an augmenting path, you actually need to know all of the of the nodes on the augmenting path. So if I found this 
पास आई नीड टू हैव द नॉलेज दैट द पाथ कंसिस्ट ऑफ एस ए सी एंड टी एंड दिस इज वॉट अनेबल्स यू टू डू इट टू बेसिकली रिमेंबर द पाथ सो पेरेंट ऑफ टी वुड रिप्रेजेंट द दिस इज द पेरेंट एरिस माइनस वन रिप्रेजेंट वी हैवन फाउंड एनी पेरेंट एंड माइनस टू रिप्रेजेंट इट डजेंट हैव एनी पेरेंट बिकॉज सोर्स इज द पॉइंट वेर यू स्टार्ट सो इट हैज़ नो पेरेंट पेरेंट इज द नोट फ्रॉम विच यू केम टू दिस नोट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ द ऑर्ग्यूमेंटिंग पाथ वॉज दिस एस ए बी एन टी देन द पेरेंट ऑफ टी वुड बी बी बिकॉज यू केम टू टी फ्रॉम बी सो पेरेंट ऑफ टी वुड बी बी सिमिलरली पेरेंट ऑफ बी वुड बी ए सो दिस एरे हेयर uh keeps track of parent of each node since source has no parent that is why i have initialized it with minus 2 now uh if you have the knowledge of parent of each node then you can actually find out the uh the path so if parent of t is b then you would go to b parent of b is a so you would go to a parent of a is s so you would go to s and finally you have found the whole path so it is T A B S or S A B T. So that is why we are using the parent error. Now this is Q, which is the standard B F S procedure. Uh, this represents the fr front of Q, and this represents rear of Q. Basically, any deletion would take place from here. Any addition would take place from this side. So now, what we would do? Of course, uh, we would do the basic B F S stuff that we do. What we would do? We would insert source in it. So. source with uh the minimum capacity found till now infinity now what is this see uh, when we are finding the augmenting path if we find the augmenting path like this as a b t the minimum capacity on this path is 5 so 7 5 and 8 so the minimum is 5 so basically on this path you can send a uh, five amount of uh, of flow and that is why you need to keep track of minimum since we need to keep track of minimum this the second uh, second param parameter represents the minimum of path found till now so since we are just starting so i'll be keeping this infinity now we'll take out s because what happens now the bfs starts so first we see whether the queue is empty or not of course the queue is not empty we would take out the first element which is s so uh as is connected to a and d right so we would insert a and d both now as to a the minimum capacity found till now uh the starting point is s and till now we have reached a so minimum capacity found to this path is 7 so that is why we are having 7 here basically minimum of parent comma the new edge so infinity comma 7 is Seven and for four it is infinity comma minimum of infinity comma four is four. So on this path minimum capacity found till now is seven. On this path minimum capacity found till now is four. So uh, we have inserted D and A both with proper uh, minimum capacities. And now in the parent array since you have reached D and A from S, so parent of D and A would be S. So parent of D and parent of A is uh, is updated to S. now again we will see whether the queue is empty or not of course the queue is not empty so you take the first element out which is a comma 7 and then you would see that uh, what are the nodes which are a connected to a is connected to b c uh, because we are taking out first which is a comma 7 so a is the next node we are working with so a is connected to s d c and b yeah one more thing uh, when working with admin cards we would assume that the graph is actually undirected reason of course because we have both the edges if we have one edge we have both the edges because we are assuming there is an imaginary reverse edge and that is why we are considering it as a uh, uh, undirected graph so s is is connected to s d c and b but the problem with s and d is that they are already visited how do we know that uh, if they are not visited then their parent would be minus 1 but parent of s is not minus 1 parent of d is not minus 1 so these two are out of option we have, we are left with b and c so we'll insert b and c because b and c are not visited yet so from a we would insert b and c So I have inserted B and C and removed A comma seven. Now it was A comma seven, so minimum was seven till now. So 
uh, the minimum till b would be minimum of 7 comma 5 minimum of 7 comma 5 is 5 so of course it is 5 for c it would be minimum of 7 comma 3 which is 3 so we have inserted b and c now since we have inserted b and c we need to update their parents as well parent of b and c would be a now we we'll take out d uh, since d is connected to a c and as the problem is all of them are visited so d cannot add anything so we'll simply remove d now it's time for b uh, from b b, uh, b is connected to a c and t while a and c are already visited we have only left with one option to uh, to insert t so we insert t comma 5 because till b it was how much it was t uh, till t uh, sorry till b it was a 5 minimum till b was 5 now minimum till t would be minimum of 5 comma 8 which is 5 of course so t5 is added now since we have added t we need to update the parent of t which is b because we have k uh, because t is traversed from b so parent of t is equals to b now as soon as you reach t you know that you have found an augmenting path because we have started from s now we are at t now since we have found a uh, augmenting path which is having minimum capacity uh, the augmenting path is having minimum capacity 5 so we would return 5 indicating that we can increment we have found uh, uh, an augmenting path which is having the minimum capacity 5 so we can increment or send a flow of value 5 so basically we are going to increment the flow 5 uh, by 5 so let me show you the algorithm how it works so here you see uh, this is a 2d grid to represent the residual capacity and this is the adjacency list now what is happening here see we are in this would return the maximum flow and this is the bfs bfs part so what is happening here flow is initialized with zero and here we are finding the flow and finally returning the maximum flow now what is what here we are doing we are initializing the parent array this array now we are initializing the parent array uh, basically yeah initializing the parent array and new flow we are also using new flow variable now while new flow is equals to bfs of s t and parent we are passing the parent array source and terminating point now bfs would return the maximum flow uh, argument uh, maximum uh, basically minimum capacity of augmenting path if it finds one so what it does it re receives three parameter of course and make sure that you pass parent array using reference otherwise you may receive tle now we are filling the parent array with minus one as i have done initially all of the values were minus one in uh, only for source it was minus two so for source parent of source we are setting with minus two now this is just to store the the pairs in the queue and we are inserting in the queue source comma infinity the step one and then the usual bfs stuff you take out the front and current node is q dot front dot first because first represents the node second represents the minimum uh, minimum capacity found till now and the flow is equals to q dot front dot second and you of course remove that no uh, remove that pair from the queue and for each node in the adjacency list of current node what we would do we would see whether its parent is equals to minus one if its parent is equals to minus one and the capacity the residual capacity is positive so it is checking for the residual capacity to be positive if both the condition are true basically you for example if i go back here if i take out b in the adjacency list of b i have c a and t but uh, parent of c is not minus one parent of a is not minus one but parent of t is minus one as you can see so i can go to t and residual capacity of b comma t is actually positive that is why i can actually insert it into the cube so first i'll be setting the parent of it and then we'll be calculating the new flow would be the flow found till now comma the new capacity basically you are calculating the minimum of b comma t right so new flow would be uh, the minimum of flow found till now comma the cap uh, the residual capacity of the edge current comma next if you have found if 
the next node is actually terminating point then we are going to return the new flow otherwise we are going to insert it into the queue if after running this while loop we haven't found any augmenting path if you haven't found any augmenting path this line won't be executed basically you'll end up here if you end up here basically you have not found any augmenting path and that means your graph doesn't contain any augmenting path if your graph doesn't uh, contain any augmenting path you would return zero so that explains this while condition so if bfs returns zero so a new flow would be zero if in the condition you have passed zero you would basically terminate so if you have found no augmenting path it would return zero and if it returns zero this while loop will stop so basically we are stopping when we don't find any augmenting path otherwise it returns the new flow if you have found the new flow what you would do you would uh, in the flow you would add the new found flow and then we need to update the residual graph let me show you how the residual graph is updated so let's go and update update the residual capacity graph so what would happen uh, to update it we need to find the path augmenting path and since we have found this augmenting path which is uh, which uh, using which we can increment the flow by 5 so basically we need to reduce the capacity of this path by 5 and also increment the flow through these edges by 5 right so initially the current node is going to be terminating point so parent of t is b so we are talking about the edge bt right so the the capacity the residual capacity of bt would be reduced by 5 so bt would be reduced by 5 so i have reduced bt by 5 and one more thing since you have reduced the capacity of res uh, residual capacity of HBT by 5 you would increment uh, now you would increment TB by 5 as well I have not shown it here because it represents the reverse edge because BT is the original edge so TB is actually reverse edge so uh, since there is now a flow from BT of value 5 if you remember from the previous lecture if there is a flow f in the original graph then the residual capacity of the reverse uh, reverse edge would be plus f as well so since you are remo uh, reducing the capacity of edge bt you would increment in tb so this would be plus 5 0 plus 5 uh, i haven't shown that about the reverse edge and that you can found uh, you can see here so current is equals to t basically your terminating point while current is not equals to s because s does not have any parent so while current is not equals to at what you do you would find the parent of it which is called pre previous here and the capacity of previous comma current would be decremented by flow and capacity of uh, current comma previous basically the reverse edge would be incremented by the new flow and of course current is equals to previous so current was it now current would become b because now we have taken care of this edge now i'm here and i'll be taking care of this edge how now current is equals to b the parent of b is equal to a so now i need to reduce the uh, residual capacity of edge a b so what i would be doing in the a b cell i'd be reducing it by five so it would become zero and also in b a i need to increment by five because it represents the reverse edge and that is exactly what is happening here so i hope you have understood this code and the the link to this article i'll be putting in the description and if i have already explained that i'm using cpalgorithm.com as the reference for maximum flow so i'll be providing the link of this article in the description of the video so this was all for this lecture i hope you have understood how the uh, admin cups algorithm work and the implementation of it so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep coding thank you